Welcome friends to Brew Bros HQ here in the heart of Dorset UK. It's that time of year again where some of you may have uh, found lurking under your Christmas tree one of our brewery in a box kits. So congratulations and well done for being good. So this is uh, the first video of a two part series which is uh, related to our kits and it covers some tips, some things we've, um, that we've experienced, some questions that some of you have asked over the last year or so that may help with your first brew. The second part is going to be a video on how to progress your brewing if you enjoyed the process, which hopefully you did. Uh, it's various things you can consider to take your brewing to the next step and what to do from here. Cheers. Now I realize that some of you may start brewing straight away. Some of you may leave it um, a few weeks and do it after Christmas and others of you may never even get around to brewing the kits and, and, and they will just sit on a shelf or in your garage like the uh, Turkish delight in the Christmas chocolate box. And that's fair enough. If you don't plan to brew straight away, we do recommend that you take the yeast and the hops out and then put them in your fridge just so they can stay fresh. Brewing can be stressful, so wait for a nice quiet house when everyone's gone out, don't get too leathered and throw the cat outside. You need a pot which is six liters minimum, although eight to 10 liters is ideal, plus a second pot which is three liters minimum. Check out Amazon and search for stock pot. Ikea is also a good shout. You can buy stock pots with volume markings which are really useful but they're quite expensive. By measuring out various quantities of water and putting them in your pot, you can mark up your own dipstick on a piece of wood, ruler, a bit of plastic, whatever you want to use to uh, work out volumes. Bottled water is good because it's the right mineral content with no chlorine or undesirable flavours and it negates the issue of whether you live in a hard water or a soft water area. We live in a hard water area here which is not ideal for quite a few styles of beer. Also, once you've successfully crafted a few brews, you can start looking at the water profile uh, and adjust in terms of calcium, chloride, sodium and so on, which is something you'll want to look at further down your, uh, your brewing career. Sanitizing or sterilizing is something that really stresses people out, but there's really no need. It's, uh, it's not black magic. You just need to remember the golden rule that once your beer gets cooled, or on the cold side as brewers like to say, you just need to sanitize anything that comes into contact with your beer. The first step is to mix your sanitizer powder with warm water. Our kits are supplied with 10 grams, which makes around three liters of sanitizer solution. A spray bottle helps, but otherwise, I keep around two liters in the sink and one liter in a jug or similar. Then, by sanitizing, we mean rinse or soak your already cleaned items like funnels, spoons, kegs, uh, even thermometer probes in your sanitizer solution. Sanitizer solution is no rinse, which means that you don't need to worry about the foam or the, any of the liquid, the sanitizer solution that's left on your items because they can just come in straight into contact with the beer. Three items you can invest in which are inexpensive but will significantly improve your results are a fermentation bucket, that's a five litre uh, bucket, a siphon and also a pot of sanitizer. You can never have enough sanitizer. By spending £16-ish you'll be able to ferment in the bucket rather than the keg and then siphon into your keg containing the dextrose for carbonation. Just ensure the siphon and keg are washed and thoroughly sanitised. When the instruction video was made we recommended an elastic band to hold your grain net out of the wort when sparging. It's actually much easier, and this is a bit of a hack, to use a rack from a grill or a cake stand or something like that, and then that way you can rest your grain bag on it and then trickle your sparge water over it, which is a lot easier than just trying to lift it out of the pan. Don't fill your keg beyond four and a half liters full. You need some headspace at the top of your keg during fermentation, because some fermentations are surprisingly active uh, at what they call high krausen, and there will be a whole load of foam. So around an inch of headspace is advisable at the top. Don't be alarmed if bubbles stop after a day or two of fermentation. Every fermentation is different. Some are slow and steady, whereas others are brisk for the first few days and all crash bang wallop and then appear to stop completely. Your beer will be fermenting fine, so just let it complete its 10 to 14 days and just don't worry about it. Yeast like a consistent fermentation temperature. So if you can hold yours around 19 to 20 degrees, it will improve the quality of your brew. One way you can do this is by investing in a heat pad or a heat belt. Further down the line, you can, you can buy a fridge and, uh, and, and make it into your own uh, fermentation chamber. 
but a heat belt or a heat pad is about 20 pounds. You can get them on Amazon. But to be honest, as long as your house doesn't get ridiculously cold or ridiculously hot, I really wouldn't worry uh, about fermentation temperature for your first couple of brews. Some people get offended by the sight of sediment. Sediment is part of home brewing and it consists of yeast and protein particles and hot matter too. It's harmless and you can take steps to minimise it. You will have a centimetre of sediment in the bottom of your keg, so always consider this when opening it and moving it around. There are three ways that you can minimise sediment at this beginner level. Firstly, we have the cold crash. Now, cold crash is a brewing term for putting your beer in the fridge for two to three days. And as it gets colder, the uh, sediment that's in suspension drops to the bottom. Step two is re-kegging. Now, what we mean by this is once fermentation is over, you use a siphon to transfer or rack your beer from the keg back into the, um, into the pot that you brewed in. And then you thoroughly clean out the keg and sanitize it then transfer the beer back in again, where it will mix with the dextrose um, for carbonation. Step three is when you serve your beer, just keep it very still and uh, if you need to move it, just allow it time, at least an hour to rest before you try to pour it. Which leads on to the valve at the top of the keg. Some folks have missed the instructions printed on the top of the keg in the past and ignored the step where the valve at the top needs opening first before pouring. This is essential. During carbonation, a few PSI of pressure will have built up inside your keg, and then once the valve is opened, you'll hear the carbon dioxide being expelled. If this isn't done, and the tap is open first, all of the CO2 will move through your beer and force a load of air and foam out of the tap. It will also disturb all of the sediment, so in a nutshell, the beer will be ruined, and you may get covered in it. There goes another one. Signs your beer is infected. Everyone is paranoid about their beers getting infected. If it smells sour, musty, uh, vinegary, eggy, then you need to chuck that filth away and don't even bother trying to drink it. It's obviously a shame when this happens, but you just need to take it on the chin, learn from it, sanitize better next time. How long will your beer last? Once you open your keg and allow oxygen inside, it will start to deteriorate right from that moment. You'll have three to four days max to drink it before it becomes vinegary and uh, nasty, just like it would with a car scale. If left unopened, it's advisable to keep cool and drink within a month to experience the hops at their most aromatic, but it will keep for a year or much longer if you refrigerate it. Hopefully you'll want to reuse the keg, uh, and that's possible, but it will involve removing the stopper. I'm not going to go into how to do that because there's plenty of videos on YouTube that cover how to remove the stopper that are probably much better than I could do. Um, check out the link in the description. If you brew again, we offer a range of refill kits which include a new stopper, so you don't need to worry about destroying it when you remove it. Or if you don't plan to brew again or use the keg, it is recyclable. If you fancy getting adventurous with your brew, try adding some fruit juice. Add to your keg just before you pour the wort in. Mango and uh, more subtle juice is around 450 ml. Bear in mind still that you need to um, fill to the four and a half litre mark. Grapefruit and raspberry and, and stronger uh, uh, flavours of juice, uh, around about half of that, so about 225 ml. With our stout kit, try some coffee. Try eight to 10 shots of espresso or thereabouts, or maybe even 30 ml of vanilla essence. I wouldn't try chocolate or peanut butter, chili, uh, gingerbread, or any of that kind of stuff until you're a bit more advanced. Your used grain, or spent grain as we call it, can be used for a variety of purposes. You can bake tasty bread, please see the uh, video that we've already made. You can turn it into dog treats, you can feed it to birds, pheasants and chickens like it, and uh, pigs too apparently. We have four refill kits available, both on Amazon and our own web shop. We've got Classic IPA, Tribute to Doombar, Tribute to Punk IPA, and also Tribute to Guinness, uh, with, with a few more planned soon. We also have a variety of clone kits of popular beers, probably 50 plus, that we've trialled ourselves in five litre batches, so that's a good place to go next. And finally, you're very welcome to ask us questions as, as much as you like over YouTube or on Instagram or Facebook or, or email or however you want, really. We're always happy to chat um, uh, with new brewers. We're passionate about it and, and hope you will be too. So fire any questions over.
And there we go, that's the, uh, that's the end of the tip video. Look out for the next one, which covers uh, how you can advance your brewing once you've got the first one under your belt. We hope you have a great experience with it and you enjoy the process. And uh, yeah, keep in touch, send us a photo of how it turns out. Um, keep an eye on the channel and take care.